Hacking, ladies and gentlemen, 49 coming at you. Another community shoutcast for the OUSA Dota League Season 1. Uh, just loading into a best of three series. This is the tiebreaker series between TYK up against 2AP to determine who moves on to the next group stage. Uh, joining me as my co-caster for game number one is Felfi's friend, Captain of Felfi and Friends. He'll be commentating with me from in-game client, so we won't be able to hear from him until we load on in. So it should be a good series. Um, TYK and 2IP are both currently uh, tied for points over in the group 2 play playoff, so this will determine which team gets to advance. Uh, the other three teams that have, have advanced so far is Horseman the Ruckus, Felfi and Friends, and Bambi Rising. So Felfi's friend, how are you doing? Oh, uh, hey man. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. <laughs> Sweet, sweet. Just testing out this whole uh, okay. mic thing. Yep. <laughs> Just gonna quickly log into Steam right before we start the game. Wolf can't keeping us all entertained with some banter. How bad's your ping? Oh, uh, it's like two hundred. Oh, okay, I'm not playing, so that's sweet. Yeah, it's not too bad. <laughs> Bambi was co-casting me yesterday. He had something like 3,000 ping, so he, he couldn't even cast in the end. He just had to step out. So we've got 2IP with first pick. will be interesting to see who they choose to go for. I've noticed that Wolf 2IP uh, likes to draft Lycanthrope as their primary carry. So we'll see if TYK actually respect Ban and Lycanthrope. That's one of the drawbacks of the team, is they are pretty straightforward with their picks and bans. And that can make them a bit static in regards to... Uh, being outdrafted just because they do rely on the same few heroes over and over again. It's quite easy to predict what how they're going to draft uh, their heroes and how their game plan goes. TYK also kind of in the same boat. They always go for that huge team fight, and so they've been practicing a lot of pocket strats. But the issue with pocket strats is after you use it the first time, it's affecting the kind of tapers off. So it'll be interesting to see what they pull out of the bag this time. Radiant team ban. Actually, Felfi, I've got a quick question for you. Where did you guys come up with the name? Felfi and Friends. Um... Uh... It's, um... My brother's, my, brother, my brother's name is Felfi. Like, not his real name. Um, Dota name. Right. And he got that from a pub a long time ago. Something about... I think some guy was raging at him and just saying, You guys fell for day, and he... Him and his friend just turned it into a name. So that's where <laughs> Felfi came from, and then he just turned it into Felfi and Friends. Right, okay. I just find it so funny that uh, Felfi is the captain and Felfi's friend's the captain. So, like, wouldn't it be Felfi's friend and friends? So, the Felfi and friends? Or is that just like a. <laughs> is that just like a nah, just pedantic a little, thing? Little, yeah, just a little gimmicky thing. Yeah, fair enough. So, you guys are all dentistry students. So, do you know uh, Victor's team Bambi Rising at all? Or. Do you not know about yeah, them until. Yeah, yeah, I know. Team pick. I know, um. 5200 or 5200 I know him and um I don't know the other guys but like I've seen them around oh yeah is it like uh, is it pretty big classes or is it like real small now that you guys are in third fourth year oh it's only it's only like only three of our team members actually do dent um my brother does mid and AO does food Ten science seconds remaining. oh okay <laughs> so we've got the pretty Asian studies coming out from both teams remaining. dentistry and med <laughs> like that. And so we've got Naga Sirens, the first pick, coming in from 2IP. And as in retaliation, TYK going to Lone Druid as well as Visage. So they're already pulling out all the stops. Uh, Pandy is one of his signature heroes. He'll be going playing that offlane Lone Druid. Visage is the undisputed king of the tri lane, going up against a Naga Siren as well as Disruptor. So it'll be interesting to see how the Visage pick works out. Just because Naga Siren can punish the Visage with the Ensnare as well as the Riptide, choose through Visage just because he has zero armor. And Disruptor's got that glimpse to send him back as well if he catches the hero out of position. So 2IP, looks like they want to clash Tri-V Tri and TYK, they're more than happy to do that Ten as well. Seconds remaining. So they've got that Lycanthrope Respect second ban. Dyer, just because Lycanthrope bang. is a pretty good counter to Lone Druid, because he picks up in terms of uh, slip pushing and teamfight potential faster than Lone Druid does. Lone Druid doesn't really pick up in terms of teamfighting and pushing until he picks up his Radiance, whereas Lycanthrope, once he has his Vladimir's and Medallion, he's good to go. Necro 3, he could pick that up as well, Ten but he doesn't necessarily remaining. need that through the push. He has so much uh, damage up coming out from his wolves. I mean, you guys like to run like a throw as your primary farmer as well in a lot of games. Reserve yeah, time. he's just so... He's just like such an annoying hero to fight this patch. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it actually is kind of absurd. I mean, that's the reason why Naga Sarin uh, rose the competitive scene, just because he was used to counter Lycanthrope, because you've got that net to ensnare him in place uh, through Shapeshift and through BKB. And that's pretty much one of the only ways you could beat him down, is so if you just lock him down, 
uh, through BKB and kill him Radiant off before banned. he's able to just run away. And so Ancient Apparition banned off from 2IP. TYK were able to run a Visage AA combination in their tri lane. I think it was game two, uh, their series up against you guys. So they had the Sven, Visage, and the Ancient Apparition. Pretty brutal remaining. combination, but you guys were eventually just able to split push and rat dota them down. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they had a pretty crazy team fight, but um, our nature, nature stuff kind of kept us in the game, and yeah. It was just the issue with TYK's draft in that game was they relied. They had too many moving pieces. They needed the perfect blink initiation coming from Darkseid, yeah, and then Magnus RP, man. and then Sven had to follow up the Storm Bolt. Whereas all you guys really had to do is just have uh, Felfi pop the Shadow Blade, walk in, see if you get a Dragon Tail initiation and start the fight from that, or have AO blink in with and uh, drop the Master Serpent once you can start a fight. And so we've got yeah, the. I mean, the Magnetor was. Oh, sorry, you, you speak well. Oh, uh, they've Five gone for the Death Prophet ban, so they're fearing the amount of pushing power coming up from TYK, especially with that Lone Druid and the Visage. Familiars actually do provide a fair amount of Reserve pushing power. Time. And you were saying, Felfi's friend? Oh yeah, I'm just in that second game. Um, yeah, they had like a massive one more combo, but um, like the it was weird because the Darkseer wasn't really initiating. It was the Magnetor, and that was like pretty hard for him, or the Magnus. So yeah, I'm not too sure what happened there. Yeah, I don't know. He kept dropping wall in front of tower and not using his blink dagger, even though he picked one up later on in the game. I was very surprised at the plays coming out from. I think it was Golfrey who was playing that uh, Darkseer that game. Very questionable Darkseer plays. And so we've got that Shadow Shaman banned out, so... Yeah, like... <laughs> Keep going. Uh, oh, no, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah like, if they got the combo off, they would've wrecked us pretty hard in the team fight. Yeah, although you, I did notice you guys uh, did your best to make sure you're always split up, just to... If Magnus was able to catch you guys in RP, then catch one or two. And a lot of those RPs, I think he landed one th four-man RP, the rest after that were two or one-man RPs. So some good uh, Delta splits coming out from Felfi and friends. Showing off that coordination, the power of friendship. Hey, the power of friendship. <laughs> yeah, me and 5200 were joking about it. And I asked him if uh, any of you guys are bronies, and he's like, nah, I don't think so. I mean, I don't know about them. I don't know about Felfi, but I don't think his, any of his team are bronies, just because I was thinking power of friendship, huh? <laughs> and so we've got the Shadow Shaman and the Weaver Band coming out from TYK. So Weaver, very mobile carry, synergizes well to Naga Siren, because you've got... Uh, Two forms of reducing armor, the Riptide coming out from Nagasarin, as well as the Swarm coming out from Weaver. Also has pretty good synergy with the Disruptor, uh, just because Weaver's a highly mobile hero, so you can get a lot of attacks off. And Disruptor with Glimpse, as well as Kinetic Field, can lock them in place, enable Weaver to get those right clicks. Also can go 1v1. I don't know how Weaver fares against Lone Druid in the 1v1 matchup, I think Lone Druid beats him, just because the bear, and with the right clicks coming out from him, he could out-CS you. Radiant but Weaver pick. won't, it will be difficult to kill the Weaver just because he's got the security to stay out of range. Lifestealer picked up as a tri-lane carry from TYK. So it looks like this game, they're not going for a wombo combo, they're just going for some consistently strong drafts. So, so far they picked up very three, uh, three very strong heroes. You've got the Visage for the tri-lane as well as the Lifestealer, Lone Druid over in the offlane. They just need to pick up their mid hero. Probably will be wanting to do that as their fourth or fifth pick. Just because uh, they want to ban out mid heroes they don't want to face off against. So 2IP with their third pick will be interesting to see who they choose to go for. And so far they've only picked up uh, Trilane heroes. Although Naga Siren can be quite an effective mid hero. With 6 base armor she's difficult to bully out of the lane. And she can constantly throw out that Reserve Riptide time. to uh, farm as well as harass and control the creep equilibrium. I think it was uh, 5200 that was telling me that you finally, you, you were kind of annoyed when I called you out saying that the only hero team you play was a Disruptor the entire tournament, and then you uh, showed me wrong with playing that Earthshaker. Yeah, it was, it was kind of like, we were actually a little bit surprised that they banned the Disruptor in buff games. I mean, it was a little funny. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, I figure if they've if they've seen all your games, you always rely on the disruptor in the tri lane. So maybe it was just a respect ban coming out, fearing the power of Felfi's friends disruptor. Yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Don't think it made too much impact, but it was just one of those things. It could have even been some next level mind games coming out from you guys. Maybe they were so afraid of playing disruptor that they're forced to ban him out. So it meant they couldn't ban out another key here. Yeah, yeah, kind of open up the pool a little bit. Yeah, because it's very rare to see teams first pick Disruptor. I mean, second pick, like what 2IP did. Yeah, that's not too bad, but first picking a Disruptor is pretty strange. So you guys must be fairly confident in your abilities on that Disruptor. 
Yeah, we've got the Nyx Assassin picked up for 2 IP, so you could be playing that offline role. Uh, just because you already have the Nagasaran as well as Disruptor, who are better tri-line support heroes, because Nyx Assassin needs a lot of levels. Nagasaran can find that farm with the Mirror Images as well as the Riptide. So if she just picks up an early point in the Mirror Images later on in the game, she can use them to stack and pull Ancient uh, Neutrals and use the Riptide to farm them down. Next assassin fares okay against the lone druid just because if he does get entangled he can just impale both the bear as well as the lone druid pop the spike carapace and run for the hills he's got pretty good base regeneration Five as well so it makes him difficult to dislodge out of lanes and once he hits level six he could go on the ganking warpath visage in particular time. pretty much food for the next assassin if he gets level six before the visage does just because visage has a very low survivability and TYK picking up Sanking as a secondary support hero. Pick. Really good synergy coming out with the Visage and the Sanking, because you've got the Grave Chill, which has a high initiation range. It also is a pretty potent snare, so that gives Sanking enough time to walk up and throw out his Bar Strike. Once he gets a few points up in that Bar Strike, it's an incredibly powerful spell. I mean, in game number two of you guys up against uh, Horseman of Ruckus, your uh, stand in, what was it, Flip Switch over on that Sanking? Consistently land those two three man Bar Strikes, really did turn the game around, just because you can always catch Horseman of the Ruckus on the position and overextend it. And that's not even talking. Yeah, he's playing pretty well that game. Five seconds remaining. Yeah, so him and Vita Corleone, they're not in any teams, they're just... But they know you guys in real life. Assassin. Yeah, 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 yeah some. Bang. One of us flat, mate, and one um, flat switch is in my class. Alright, it's a bit of a pity uh, Vito Corleone isn't in the tournament, huh? His Invoker and Shadowfiend players are very impressive. Yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he's a really good player, but um, yeah, he doesn't have much depth. Ten seconds doesn't remaining. doesn't have much time to commit to the tournament. Yeah, that's fair. It does chew up a lot of time. And Templar Five Assassin picked up, so one of Yoda's key heroes. So it'll be interesting to see how he fares in that mid matchup. It forces TYK actually Ten to draft a hero remaining. that can break even with the Templar or actually counter him. So that forces our TYK to Five draft a hero around the Templar Assassin, similar to an Outworld Destroyer. That's one of the advantages of the Templar Assassin pickup. Although at the same back. time, if Templar Assassin is countered in lane, she's a hero that relies entirely on snowballing. It can actually be quite detrimental for, to her. But the thing to keep in mind though with the TA is it's so easy to turn around with her just because you've got the refraction. If you pick up a magic stick in a bottle, even though it looks like you have a very low HP, you can instantly turn around, throw out that meld hit and just right click people down. Templar Assassin does provide a huge amount of burst remaining. damage. The last time Yoda played the Templar Assassin, he actually went for a very old school build. Phase, bottle into a uh, blank dagger, and then he was able to pick up a desolator off the gold he got. Haven't seen that build Dyer since TI2, TI3. It's a very old school build. I think the common build now is Treads into uh, Drums of Endurance. Phase Boots kind of has fallen out of favor for TA, just because people have learned to uh, respect her and to react better to being caught out of position. But it still is a very effective build, just because it gives you that instant burst initiation, and you deal so much damage with the fraction as well as the meld. And so, fifth band coming out from TYK, that Luna. So, fairing the aggressive tri lane power coming out from 2IP, as Ten well as the Viper band. Remaining. So they're faring mid heroes that can shut down the Templar Assassin, and Viper's one of the best ones. Puck, good hero to go up against the Templar Assassin, because Puck won't be able to win the lane just because Templar can shrug off all harassment from with the Refraction, but it'll be difficult to kill the Puck just because you have the Illusory Orb, as well as the uh, Phase Shift to dodge hits. But all in all, I think TA should have a pretty clear lane advantage against the Puck just with the Sideblade Harass. What are your thoughts on the TA v uh, Puck matchup mid? So I'm just like a little bit, I'm lagging a little bit, but um, yeah, like, I mean, um, traditionally don't people think of TA as a counter to Puck, mm -hmm. so I don't know, maybe. Prepare for battle. And they've gone. Sorry, can you hear me? Yeah, uh, you actually cut out for that last bit, you said they traditionally don't consider TA a counter to Puck, and then you just cut out from there. Oh yeah, no, I was just saying, like, so it was a bit interesting, um, seeing them choose what, <laughs> like, the hero that, um, TA would counter, but, yeah, mm -hmm. like, I think it's a pretty good pick, good control for the, um, to land the, um, SK ulti, that would be pretty good. Yeah, and you've got the Chaos Knight picked up, so Wolf Cut, he doesn't seem to like playing edgy carries, he always likes going for strength carries, Chaos Knight, incredibly powerful, especially the combination they have. You've got the uh, Ensnare, the Reality Rift, and the Chaos Bolt to lock people in place or to reposition them. You follow up with the Glimpse or the Kinetic Field, so Kinetic Field will trap in place once you throw out the Ensnare, and then you Glimpse them back to the hat to survive. Massive amount of killing power coming out from the Chaos Knight. The thing you have to keep in mind though with the CK, is he does need a lot of gold to be effective as a hard carry. Uh, he needs to have an item advantage over the enemy carry, similar to the Lifestealer or the Viper. And that's his biggest weakness. If he's not able to get that uh, a dominating lead in the early stages of the game, he does fall off quite quickly. 
just because he needs a fair amount of levels and EXP to pick up in terms of his damage. Phantasm is a very long cooldown, and while it is an incredibly powerful steroid ability, as well as pushing ability, it just is a huge cooldown, especially if you blow it too early. If all of the enemy team backs away. Smoke actually breaks, but they're able to catch up the spirit bear. Could go for a level 1 gank on the bear. I don't think they have enough damage to finish it off. But Pandy looks like he's going to be up against that tri lane 1v3. So they might actually want to rotate their lanes. Since uh, Lone Druid's very happy to go 1v3. With that bear, he could leash the creep wave back to him. So you'll always be able to find this farm. And Nyx Assassin has a much more difficult time as an offlane hero in a 1v3 situation. Thundercunt already TPing back over to the bottom lane. So it looks like they're uh, maintaining this lane. So hoping that they're going to be able to shut down this lone druid. They've placed a very aggressive ward over here. So that's able to see him when he's behind tower. Illusion room picked up with a lifestealer. And pucking in those uh, creep wave blocks in. So Mickey Mouse is going to have a very good time in the mid lane. Just because Mule had rotated top to go for that early uh, level 1 engagement with that smoke. But since they weren't able to find anyone, or the smoke was broken by the bear. Mickey Mouse now has the high ground vision of the Templar Assassin. So that's going to make it very difficult for her to be able to win the CS war. But with that refraction though, TA should have a pretty good time. That uh, RNG actually making a miss one CS there. One of the things to keep in mind with the TA is you can actually tell when Refraction is up, even if you're in the uh, opposing team, just by the fact that her blades uh, actually become bigger and they glow brighter. It's just one of those little details that's added in Dota 2 that's not in Dota 1. So you can see right now the blades are not glowing as brightly and they're not as red. I think it's a sort of like a purpley pinkish kind of glow, so that's when you can tell she has Refraction up. Denied. Since you can't actually see the shield unless uh, you take damage. So it's just a good way to know when TA has popped a refraction. Just in case if you think about blowing your abilities. Yoda over on the Naga Siren. Interesting that he's not playing the uh, Templar Assassin. Mule, he's been playing uh, mid lately a lot more. TYP uh, team similar to TYK. They like to rotate their uh, roles around. Based on heroes. But a lot of their players have a lot of overlap with the heroes as well. And we've got that little Tandy the stand in. Over in the Sand King actually rotating over top. Actually, Felfi, do you know what the reason is for um, Valerie as well as Little Tanny having Sing 2 in front of their name? Is that like the old team they played for? I have no I idea, man. Yeah, because... I, no <laughs> I can never tell if they're actual members of TYK, if they're stand-ins, or what, what the hell the deal is with that. I just know that they like to play with those two, with uh, Valerie as well as Little Tanny from time to time. I think Valerie is a permanent addition, but uh, Little Tanny seems to be every now and then. It looks like a lifestealer offline. So they're transitioning to a lone druid tri lane just because they know that a lifestealer should have a very easy time against the Nyx Assassin. Neither one should be able to kill the other, although I guess Nyx would have the advantage because he could pop Rage, and Nyx Assassin is actually out of mana right now. So Lifestealer could go for a few cheeky right clicks. It's very rare to see Lifestealer go in the offlane 1v1. Ever since uh, Open Wounds was nerfed, you haven't really seen that happen. I think it was YYF on IG that really showcased uh, the power of the Lifestealer in the offlane. We've got some ping and net issues coming up from TYK. Happens to them from time to time. Yoshi was telling me about the effectiveness of the uh, Lone Druid Troy lane just because it does give him a lot of gold. But myself, I've never really been too sure about how effective it is. I guess it's a similar rationale to the Storm Spirit Troy lane. It just gives you that uh, space so you can get the gold and get the farm that way. But Mule so far having a very good time in the mid lane. 9 to 3, uh, beating Puck, who's over at 5 for 1. That's just due to the fact that Refraction gives you bonus damage. And Mule with level 2 has a point up to the side blades, so you can use that to get that harassment. <laughs> so a bit of back and forth going back between two teams. Wolf can't be his usual villager himself. He's also been doing very well in terms of CS, 8 for 2. So in terms of CS scoreboards, 2 IP are leading the way from now. Lifesteal is the only one that's been keeping on path since he's been fairly uncontested with just the uh, next sass on the bottom lane. And we've got a rotation. Pandy's actually going bot. So it looks like they're going to be transitioning their lane. Thundercunt pops his uh, spike carapace. He's able to back himself back into the tower range. Pandy will be able to use the spirit bear, resummon. Or he could actually use the blink capability from it. Yeah, he just actually resummons the bear. One of the things to keep in mind when you're leaning into Lone Druid is you want to actually pick up a magic stick as soon as possible because each time he uses the return on his bear, you actually get a magic stick charge. So if you're playing a uh, hero with a lot of nukes, you can just use them to control the Lone Druid that way. Just nuke down the hero instead. Mule really showing off the power of the TA. If you can't break those refraction charges, Puck can't do anything. And Mickey Mouse taking a lot of damage. He's almost died from just from uh, the Sideblade harass. 
If you're good enough with those angles, which is pretty much TA 101, you actually can cop a fair bit of harass on the enemy heroes, even if they have the range advantage over you. Just because side blade damage uh, has got a fairly long range, even though it's quite narrow. And since you're hitting the creep, you're mitigating the armor of the hero. So it's difficult for Puck to actually be able to phase shift it, just because you can't actually tell when you're in range or not. It's a lot more difficult than if he threw an attack on you. Also means that when TA goes for denies, she could also get last hits as well. Since uh, side blades also procs and denies. Golfi actually takes a- never mind, so the disruptive Valerie takes a fall, caught in a position. Looks like the ensnare with the Chaos Bolt and the Thunderstrike seals the deal coming out from Cheese. The new 5th edition to uh, 2IP used to be too easy, their offlane player, but he's had to drop out of the tournament for personal reasons. TA with that haste rune actually could look for perhaps a gank opportunity over a Mickey Mouse. Gonna run over to the top lane and secure the uh, regeneration rune. Puck actually could choose to go for that. Korea was quite exposed. Decides not to. So huge CS lead in favor of 2IP. What are your thoughts on the game so far, Felfi? Um, yeah, like pretty pretty steady from both teams. Just trying to get their farm up. And yeah, not much action beside uh, the first blood on top. Mm hmm. We've got Nagasaru rotating bots. They actually could go for a kill over in Pandy with the Ensnare, Riptide, as well as the Impale. Although Thundercut actually doesn't have. He's just barely got enough mana for one Impale. Looks like he's going for Urna Shadows as the first big item. Doing its Very best, good pickup from Nix Assassin just because he is a solo ganking hero. So those charges can be used offensively as well as defensively to give yourself sustainability. So if Lone Druid overextends, they actually could go for a gank attack. At the same time, Lol Tangle props on Thundercut. He's copying so much damage from that. He's forced to use the Spike Carapace. Riptide flies out. But if Yoda's actually, Yoda misses the Riptide over on Pandy. They gotta back away from his Nemo, he just barely clips him. But Thundercut could actually be taking a fall if he gets another Entangle proc. But RNG Gods and Dota 2 are cruel. And Pandy's just forced to out of the lane for a little bit. But with the regeneration that he'll be picking up from his Tranquil Boots fairly soon, he should be able to sustain himself. So Disruptor rotates in, but he only has enough mana for a Kinetic Field, doesn't even have enough mana for a Glimpse. Glimpse is one of those spells where the mana cost actually decreases the more levels you get in it. Similar to, the only other ability I can think of in this game at the moment is the Soul Assumption from Visage. It's one of the ways to nerf the hero, or at least to make, make the hero less strong. Just because uh, Glimpse and Soul Assumption are both incredibly powerful spells. Pandy having some net issues. Chaos Knight on his own going 1v3, very interesting that both supports have just left him alone. Looks like there's going to be a quick disconnect and reconnect coming out from uh, TYK. Well, on, while that's happening, CK going for a very conventional build. Wow, looks like the entire TYK team disconnected. I think they're all living in the same flat, so... <laughs> Bit awkward when the entire enemy team drops out. So Chaos Knight going for the very conventional build. You want to max out Chaos Bolt as soon as possible, because it reduces the RNG coming out from the Chaos Bolt. And uh, Reality Rift is a good spell, it also scales better into the late game, just because when you get an Illusion Rune, if you get an Illusion Rune, or if you get your Phantasm Images, they also inherit the uh, plus 100 extra damage coming out from the Reality Rift. I think the last time I saw CK, he actually chose to max out his Chaos Strike, which is his crit. For whatever reason, it's actually a very poor crit, just because it has such a low proc chance. Uh, the thing with the, with the Critical Ability is it doesn't really matter how much damage it gives you if it very rarely procs. So that's why Juggernaut's uh, Blade Dance crit, crit is actually considered the second best crit after Coup de, uh, Phantom Assassin's Coup de Gras, just because it has a high crit chance of 36%, and it's always a guaranteed 2x crit. So in terms of last hits, Wolf can't actually fall off significantly if the support's rotated over. Uh, Lifesteal has been leading the way in over for TYK. 24 last hits and 7 denies. Golfrey, usually the offlane player, playing Lifesteal this game, so he's playing hard carry. Looks like he's going to pick up his face boots, he should have it very soon. He had that magic stick earlier when he was dealing up with the uh, Nyx Assassin, but now he's picked it up, especially if he's going try v try. Gives him a lot of burst regeneration for that mana, as mana management on Lifesteal is quite a critical thing on him. He just barely has enough mana to get off both Rage as well as the Open Wounds. So having that magic wand means he could get that Clutch Rage or that Clutch Open Wounds when you need it, especially when you're up against a hero such as the Nyx Assassin that could burn off your mana. So hopefully TYK should be reconnecting soon. Clarity has popped on both Nagasaru and Disruptor, so they really want to get a kill over on Pandy. Or failing that, they can rotate back in the mid lane. Pandy is reconnected. And so hopefully the rest of his team should be following. Mickey Mouse over on Puck has two Gauntlets of Strength, so could be a Urna Shadows build coming out from Puck. Very strange, you don't really see Urna Shadows on Puck, since you want to go for Boots, Bottle, and then save up until you can get Blink. So that's your core item. Pandy disconnects again, so not too sure what's happening for TYK. But all in all, 
it looks like 2 IP have the early game advantage just because they carry Chaos Knight has that lockdown and that Templar Assassin hits her peak and uh, once she hits about level 7. Whereas for TYK, uh, Lone Druid takes a fair amount of farm before he starts to pick up. If he's ha if he's having a really good game, he could go for the Radiance, otherwise he'll be forced to go for that Maelstrom. So it does offer him some uh, decent mid-game presence, but when team fights start happening, if he does have a Radiance, uh, Lone Druid actually is a fairly weak team fighting hero. So while he has excellent lane control, it does taper off the instant you start adding more and more heroes to the equation. So he'll need to find his farm and get a lot of it. So far with 18 CS, he's doing okay. He could be doing a lot better. But considering he's been going 1v3 for a lot of time, now he's only just rotated over bot. He should be able to find his farm. So it looks like every all players have reconnected. So we should be able to resume the game shortly. You see, uh, Visage actually has a magic stick as well. So all players over on TYK picking up their magic sticks whenever they can. Sand King's going to have his career out to him, as well as the Smoke of Deceit. So I think we should be good to go, but you have to keep in mind, uh, Puck has a Dream Coil, so he's at level 6. So we could actually go for a kill attempt over on Templar Assassin. If he catches him without enough mana for the Refraction, he's got that Regeneration Rune. would like to see some uh, Templar uh, side traps placed over to uh, give the vision over the runes. They provide a very small amount of vision. Okay, so it looks like we're going to be resuming. So TYK and Mickey Mouse hanging over the mid lane. He's been really bullied by attack. the Templar Assassin. So he's pick, he's picked up level 6, so he can start rotating now. Templar Assassin pops regeneration. Drops the uh, side trap over on the, where the rune spawns, so he has that vision. Phase Boot's picked up by uh, the Lifestealer, so he's got a lot more killing power. Chaos Knight has to be very careful. Lone Druid actually disconnects again, so it looks like Pandy's having a lot of internet issues. Mule Lamb Wolf Cunt definitely can. Uh, empathize with this since I think Thundercut, one of the games I casted, he disconnected three or four times in the series up against Bambi Rising, and he was playing the Tidehunter, so it was a pretty critical factor for his team. He couldn't just dis disconnect really nearly since he was he needed to be there to throw out those uh, Blink Ravages. <laughs> Jeez, just call me, just doing a bit of smack talk. And so Life Stealer probably going to be going for the Phase Drums into the uh, Armor Medigian. Lone Druid has reconnected, so hopefully his internet should be fine and dandy. And yeah, any thoughts so far, Felfi? <laughs> no, not really. I mean, pretty uh, start-stop affair with the disconnects and just a bit of, yeah, just farming going on. Mm -hmm. Everyone trying to get this... Uh, Actually, Wolf Cop will be taking a fall. Grape Shield, where's that open yeah. wounds? Never mind, Goldfree wasn't in position. Bit of miscommunication coming out. It looks like he's going for the defensive build and maxing out Rage. Would have preferred to, if he had a second point up in open wounds, he actually would have been able to get that off if he reacted instantly. And that could have actually been a kill attempt just because he could pop Rage. So it's Chaos Knight, the only hero he could stun is the uh, Visage, but Visage has a long range Soul Assumption to follow up. And enough right clicks, and with that Soul Assumption flying out, could have actually been a kill attempt over on Wolf Gun, but he's, he's able to live to hell another day. Mickey Mouse popping that clarity. And it yeah, could actually be, in. yeah, smoke gang coming out from the Sand King, but at the same time, Disruptor and TA are there, so you've got that glimpse. So Thunderstrike just to provide vision. Glimpses and back, so you can't juke up through the trees. It's one of the things you'd keep in mind. Thunderstrike is provides vision, and Mule the double damage rune just gonna smack Sand King down. Loser all flies out. Where's that Dream Coil? Never mind, just a waning rip. Puck actually overextends. Could be taking a fall. Called out with the Riptide. Mickey Mouse is calling a very bad spot. Ethereal Orb is already being used, and Yoda's able to take a very easy kill. Quick pause coming out from 2IP, not too sure what's happening from their end, maybe they're having some internet issues of their own now. <laughs> <laughs> and so Templar Assassin, that double damage rune, just completely smacks down the Sand King and then turns around and gets a free as he kills it. Two kills going in favor of 2IP, they're leading the CS scoreboard so far, three for nil. Mule actually screwing up a CS there, if he'd waited a little bit longer could have gotten both those creeps. But, oh uh, well, he's been playing uh, pretty good so far on this TA. He's been sitting there farming, so he could be seeing the uh, phase of the Blink build coming out from Templar Assassin, just because he has been given a lot of CS and control over the mid lane. And if he picks up that Blink dagger, could go for those huge early game ganks. Yoda running up, tanking up the bear. Just barely has enough mana for a... Uh, never mind, I thought she had enough mana for the ensnare. Would like to see a uh, magic stick picked up on her. 
Actually, Chaos Knight might be taking a full winning rip, follow up with the Dream Pearls. Wolfcat's going 1v3. Valorant's coming in, but he's very slow. But with that Soul Assumption flying out, that should be a kill for him. Turns around, throws up the Chaos Bolt. Three seconds on Mickey Mouse, but Wolfcat takes a full. You've got an offlane Chaos Knight and an offlane Lone Druid. Looks like he's got a gank attempt over on the bear. He's called out in that kinetic field, and he could be taking a fall with Thundercut whacking on as the next assassin, but never mind. He just barely lives. And he resummons just in case. And it looks like he's going for the Midas build. He's got a Gloves of Haste over in his bear, so he's either going for towards a Midas or towards a Maelstrom. So since he's been having such a, a mediocre game in terms of CS, it could be the Maelstrom build. Very good pickup over in the Lone Druid. However, the biggest drawback with the Maelstrom build over in Lone Druid is uh, when Maelstrom procs at the same time as Entangle, it'll override Entangle. Just because Maelstrom overrides every other uh, percentage-based procking ability in the game. So it's one of the things you have to keep in mind. Is it can actually interfere with your chances to Entangle. It's a very small chance, but when it does happen, it can potentially screw you over. We've got Valerie rotating over to the top lane to get another kill on Wolfcott. Surprise, Wolfcott doesn't even have a safety wall to keep himself safe. Middle tower is all alone he's got world. no idea what the supports are. Attacked. Actually, he's going to be caught out of the Burrow Strike coming out from the Sand King. Goldfrey running over. He's going to get that open wood. Wolfcott's going to be taking another fall. Let's have some TP rotations. Does it to Sun over on the Sand King. Grave Shield pops. And he, yeah, there's no way he's going to be able to survive this. There's a Soul Assumption. Flies out. Actually, never mind. He just Dyer's barely keeps tower. himself it's alive. Chaos Knight being tanky as all hell. Glimpses back the Visage. And Valerie's going to be taking fall. He instantly explodes. Chaos Knight up for a better revenge. Reality he rips back to free. Great three, uh, two-man burst right coming out from Little Tanny. But he's fleeing for his life now. Cheese stands alone. Doesn't have enough mana for a glimpse. Actually, with that sandstorm, he's able to keep no himself detect, alive. No detection. Yeah, no detection. But actually moves out of the way. I don't know why he ran. Three-second chaos, but he's taking a fall. There's yeah. nothing he can do there. He should have stayed there. That was strange. Yeah, he could have actually just waited at least until the kinetic field left and then gone for a run. But instead, he feeds me a free kill. Templar sounds very happy with that. She almost has a Blink Dagger, 200 gold off. TA, it looks like an 11-minute Blink Dagger coming up from her. That is absolutely terrifying. Reminiscent of those days when TA first got released in Dota 2, and in every single pub game, you'd have a TA in it. No one you had to deal with her, so you'd always, if you weren't going mid, you'd have to deal with a 11, 12-minute Blink Dagger on the enemy TA, killing everyone that moves. Huge pain in the ass, but she has been nerfed since then. Side traps now has a 30% snare when you instantly drop it instead of the 50%, so it actually scales up 5% every second. So the fact that it's not an immediate 50% snare does significantly nerf her uh, early ganking ability. But she still is an incredibly powerful hero, I think. Uh, her build now has switched towards going for uh, treads over into drums and maybe picking up your value Yasha. It has no arms to So less reliance over on the Blink Tiger. The hidden ones would have you. And Temple Assassin, yeah, it's an 11 minute blink up on Mule. Middle tower is under He's got it early being ferried out to him. Wolfcon's still going 1v3. Would like to see some support happening over the CK. Just because he does need a lot of gold before he becomes effective as a hard carry. I guess he's playing more of a ganking run kind of role. He's already got enough for his drums of endurance. Great pickup on Chaos Knight, just because it uh, all the stats pass over to the Phantom Illusions that keeps him alive. Chaos Knight's one of those heroes where the tankier he is, the more damage he actually deals. Valerie, call down the connect field. East of Vendetta, there's the Impale, and she's gonna be taking a fall. Next Assassin steals the deal with that mana burn. Yeah, Templar Assassin smoked up on the high ground, acting as bait, trying to draw the other players in, <laughs> saying, Come here. The fact that Blink Dagger no longer costs any mana could be another reason why the uh, phase into Blink Dagger build has become a resurgence over in TA. Just because the fact that it cost 75 mana before, it's the same cost of refraction. And TA has to be very careful with the mana expenditure. It's because she needs uh, mana up in all of her abilities. And notice how Yoda, now that the uh, early game settled down, he's actually farming over in the jungle as well as the bottom lane, so he's picking up the farm where he can. He's got a point up in his mirror image. So with the mirror image and his Riptide, he should be able to get a lot of farm through stacking and pulling neutrals. And with a point up in the Song of the Siren, he could be that initiation or counter initiation force in these team fights. Midas picked up, so 12 minute Midas coming out from Lone Druid. Not the fastest Midas in the world, but considering he's an offlane, 1v3. Not too bad. Wolfguard just with naked boots as well as drums. He wants to go and he's got maxed out Reality Rift and Chaos Bolt. CK is a very powerful ganking hero. Actually used to be run as a Roma and by Chinese teams. Chaos Bolt flies a 4 second stun over on Golfy. He instantly pops that Blink Dagger from Mule being revealed. Static Storm seals the deal over on the Sand King ensuring he can't Burrow Strike out. And there should be the take a free tower off the top of that. The Dyer's top tower is doing All that's happening in the mid lane. You see Puck actually going for a push. Recognizing that he, they can't defend uh, the tier 1 top. So they're going to go for a split push and trying to get a bit of a trade. What's happening? Pandy's also been getting a lot of farm over in the bottom lane. 
Just because he's up against Yoda, who can't actually do anything against the Lone Druid. Chaos Knight, and we get a free tower. And Yoda actually called out the Entangle, forced to pop Song of the Siren. So that's 180 the second pulled out on her. Even have Huge waste of a Naga Siren Ultimate, just because that's it does have such a significant. Uh, cooldown uh, for the early few levels, but huge amount of farm over Naga Siren at the same time. 2.1k on the fourth position Naga Siren. That's a massive amount of gold on her. Let's do the, the fact that she's got the kill as well as uh, the assists and the fact that they've taken two towers. So it'll be interesting to see what Naga Siren chooses to go for. Since she's been holding her gold, it could actually be maybe a Blink Dagger coming out from Naga Siren. Or she could, uh, Yoda could be playing Super Greedy and actually just saving up gold to go towards that Sacred Relic. I mean, if he doesn't die, if he continues yeah, to farm, never mind. He's gone for treads, but surprising he didn't go for arcane boots. That's also a very good uh, boots pick up on Nagasaren, just because, especially if, if you're a four position Nagasaren, it means you could gank, mid. gank over in the mid lane. Chaos Knight actually just barely lives, able to walk himself back to base. Nagasaren going for the Vladimir's offering as a first big item, so the Ring of Regeneration as well as the Bounty Ring, indicative of the fact that she's going to spawn Vlad's. You see her micro her illusions. Heading one over to the mid lane to get that Riptide. But while that's happening, tail one the bottom lane will get knocked down by two IP. Grouping up, we've got Ag the uh, Armler Medigian up on the uh, Lifestealer, so he's ready to fight. Chose to skip the, the drums, the bottom tower so he wants to go for immediate fights. Effort. Usually with Lifestealer, you want to go for phase and then into drums. It gives you a lot more stats, which is important just because uh, if you go for the max open wo wounds build, you only actually have enough mana to get one open wounds off after you use your other abilities. So having uh, the Drums of Endurance not only gives you more movement speed and attack speed, it also gives you um, enough mind to get two, maybe even three open wounds off, depending on how long the gank or the team fight goes. So it can prove to be a fairly critical factor. Yeah, it looks like they're going for a gank attempt over in Valerie. All Mule has to do is blink in with that refraction and that meld, and she's gonna just melt, but he picks up a double damage rune. Incredibly happy with that. Templar Assassin is farmed as all hell. 2,000 gold up on her. So about 1.9k away from that Desolator. So TA with phase, blink, and a Desolator in about 19, 20 minutes. Don't think TYK actually can do anything against that since the Desolator will and melt, max out meld will actually rip through Lifestealer. Lifestealer has very low armor. That's why armor mid against such a good pickup on him. So this is the Chaos Knight, but at the same time, Chaos Knight has much higher base armor. And he is also going for the armlet, choosing not to upgrade his uh, boots into treads yet. So once he picks up uh, level 9, probably will be skipping his first point in the Phantasm until level 10, level 11. Could actually be going for a Should point up in stats. Here? Yeah. Lifestealer instantly backing Almost. a leg. <laughs> He's and the rage as well. I think he was safe. Cheese over in the bottom lane. Looks like he's going for the Mechantum. So getting his farm where he can. He's got maxed out uh, Glimpse and then he's choosing to max out Kinetic Field. So very standard build coming out from him. Thunderstrike is best used as a one point wonder. Just because it provides you vision of the enemy hero for six seconds. So it makes it very easy for you to land your Glimpse. Before the uh, Thunderstrike was actually changed, that was a one of the most reliable ways to ensure where your Glimpse is going. Since Glimpse used to last for 4.5 seconds, so when you saw your, your Thunderstrike wear off, you knew that's when uh, they'd be drawn back to when you, when you glimpsed them. But it's been changed now, so it's 4 procs over 6 seconds. So it's a little bit harder, but you can still guesstimate. So after 3 procs, you know that that's where their position was. It's one of those uh, little tricks you could use to help ensure you get better glimpses. Pandy forces stick with his team now, so he hasn't been in the split push as much as he wants to, but he's 1.8k in the bank. So if he's able to continue to get uh, farm uncontested the way he's going, he should actually be able to pick up his Radiance in about 6 to 7 minutes. And that could actually be a critical pickup uh, for TYK, just because the Lifestealer, he has died a few times, and has shut down his effectiveness as a carry. Mule goes in over on Valerie, instantly kills a familiar, reality rift over on him, Chaos Bolt, and he takes a fall. Gold three times around over on Wolf Cut, Song of the Siren pops, so it's just Gold free right now, Phantasm level 1. Where's that net? Net pops. Riptide actually doesn't do anything, but the Silence and Kinetic Field completely lock out Mickey Mouse, so he can't do anything. He's glimpsed back into it, caught up with the impaled. Great power strike, Epicenter coming out from Little Tanny. Just not enough damage though. Chaos Bolt seals the deal over on Puck. Uh, Nagasaren takes a fall. Reality rifts back the, the uh, Sand King and Burrow strikes right before he dies. Thundercon's actually very low right now. He's gonna run. Panny's standing tall with his, uh, with his uh, Lone Druid Bear. Valerie comes back into the fight, instantly dies. Mule has a double damage rune, as well as a maxed out meld, doing so much damage over the Pandy right now. Mitigated the army he gets from his battle cry. Glimpses them back into the kinetic field, but the players from TYK actually have respawned just because they are such low levels and so early on in the game. So Lifesteal is back, 2 IP are going to be backing away right now. Wolfcott looks like he's going to be taking a fall. He's been beaten up, 
There's nothing he can do yet. So he feeds a lot of gold. Meal turns around on Pandy. Pandy is running for his life. Mel pops and Mule's just going to use that to buy himself time so he can uh, blink out to safety. Very messy fight for both teams, but t two IP. I will take a very convincing lead. That was an excellent blink, uh, bar strike epicenter combination coming out from Little Tanny, but it was just one pulse shy of killing the entire team. And so they'll able to pop their magic sticks, turn around, and go for a kill. Thundercut. He might be taking four. He's actually glimpses back the puck, so it's just golfing and uses Vendetta to keep himself safe. So good play coming out from uh, Cheese, who's able to get that max range glimpse off right before he runs away, provide that covering fire for the rest of his team. Mule, he's almost got his Desolator, he's about 1.5k, uh, 150 gold off that. Album and Digian picked up on the Chaos Knight, so he's going to hit that much harder. He's going to finish off his treads now, and he's level 10 and a half, so once he hits level 11, having those uh, Phantasm images up, they do a crap ton of damage. Another disconnect coming out from Pandy, his internet really has been dropping the ball. I th he wasn't able to get a kill, but he got two assists off the back of that, so he's actually about 1.1k off a Sacred Relic. But the fact that you've got Blink Desolator up on TA, Armlet up on the... Chaos Knight and a Blink Dagger up on the Nyx Assassin means they actually can just either completely ignore the Lone Druid or jump in on him and pop him the side of the fight. So just gonna do a quick. Yeah, TA's getting quite fair. Yeah, TA hasn't died at all this entire game. She's just been absolutely unstoppable. She, we did talk about her being a snowball hero, but she's had that space to snowball, and you're seeing the impact of that now. That 11 minute Blink, so clutch, gives her a lot of um, room for maneuver. As you saw, he. She went in on the Visage Familiar, popped that melt, one-shot the Visage Familiar, as well as getting some spill damage over in Visage, turned around, killed the Visage, other Familiar dropped. So Visage, 0 for 5, it's very rare to see Visage doing this bad in a game, especially when you, considering the fact that they went uh, in an aggressive try lane. He doesn't, he doesn't even have boots yet, 18 minutes in, he's very poor. Yeah, he chose to upgrade his Magic Wand before going for boots, which I disagree with. You usually stick with the uh, Magic Stick. And then you pick up your boots and then upgrade into a magic one. Just because the extra five charges aren't as important as having the movement speed from the boots is. So Chaos Knight actually having a few internet issues of his own. Naga Siren has enough gold to finish the Vladimir is offering with one more creep. So that provides plus five armor to her entire team. As well as the lifesteal over to uh, this Chaos Knight. So it's a nice little addition to their team. Also provides a fair amount of um, mana regeneration. So it's a good pick up for the Naga Siren, just because she does actually chew through a fair amount of mana. So I was a bit surprised she didn't go for the Arcane Boots. But I guess, the, considering the fact that the Nyx Assassin's going for them, as well as the Disruptor, two Arcane Boots are usually enough for a team. Wolf Gun over in the Chaos Knight, 5-2. Yeah, 2 I have a pretty good... Yeah, 2 I have a pretty good lead at the moment. Um, yeah. The puck is so undefiled, he's like so far from his blink. He's all the supports on... 2 IP are richer than him, so like he's not having a good game. Mm. Pandy is the saving grace for his team right now, but even if he does finish a Radiant in the next 3-4 minutes, when you're up against a Blink Desolated TA, Lone Druid actually does fall apart, just because his armor, um, like right now you see that he's got 7 base armor, he's getting plus 8 from the Warcry, but so the Meld as well as the Desolated debuff will completely strip him of armor, and with that negative armor of Lone Druid, he'll actually be taking a fall pretty quickly. With all the right clicking power coming out from the TA, as well as Wolfgun has been on point with his reality rifts to uh, lock people in place with the dragon back in, giving TA time to get two, three more auto attacks in. And when TA is hitting as hard as she is, those two, three auto attacks are usually enough to kill a hero. So, good plays coming out from 2 IP. Showing off their prowess in regard to individual player school. It's because Mickey Mouse was completely outclassed in the mid lane by the TA. Puck is one of those heroes that can break even with a lot of mids, but you usually don't want to break even, you want to beat them. And so the fact that Puck, who actually is a fairly dominant uh, mid lane hero, just because of high base damage, high range, as well as the fact that phase shift doesn't cost minus, so you can go for free trades against TA. See, he doesn't have ways to be able to pop all those refraction charges, does fall off. Similar to how Puck is an excellent counter to the Death Prophet, because he could. I uh, just disjoint the Crypt Swarms, so we saw, I think it was, it wasn't Felt Frame Friends, it was 2IP uh, doing this against Horseman the Ruckus in game number 2. Mule played a fantastic puck, was able to disjoint all of our King Killer's Crypt Swarms on the Death Prophet. And so uh, through that, it meant the Death Prophet couldn't actually go for any kill attempts over in Puck. And Puck was able to pick up a very fast Blink Dagger as well, I think it was something like 11-12 minutes for him. Gave him the superior initiation power, since initiation is the thing that usually wins games. Lifestealer going towards that Maelstrom. 
So he wants to build up as much damage as he can. Maelstrom's a good pickup against the Chaos Knight, just because the Lightning Procs will help pop the Phantasm images faster. Since you have to keep in mind, the Phantasm Illusions actually do full damage. And so if you don't kill them, they actually output a significant amount of DPS. It's one of the reasons why uh, you see Chaos Knights. Uh, back when he used to be played in Dota 1 and the Chinese scene, he actually used to go for Pipe of Insight as his first big item. So it gave him a, a huge sense of survivability, so... Treads into Drums of Endurance and the Pipe of Insight. So when you pop your Phantasm, you can pop the Pipe of Insight to make your illusions a lot tankier. And then just output a huge amount of damage then. Double damage and haste over on Templar Assassins. So she's going to be absolutely unstoppable. Instantly goes around the Visage, almost two shots him. One shot, the melt is set up. Second Dyer's shot just pops Visage. It has no Pandy says, I got nothing, buddy. No open venom on him. Almost is enough for a Sacred Relic, Dyer's but it's going to be too little too late. Attack. Because while that's happening, the mid tower tier 2 is taking a fall. Your team is completely falling apart. Mechanism up Dyer's on the disruptor. Wolf can't actually cop a lot of damage, but with that earn. He should be able to uh, regenerate all his HP. They're just going to go for the tier 2 top. Yoda's just going to go place an aggressive ward there. Went for the D ward, but no ward that he has vision of. What's the power of the Naga Siren as a support hero? She is a very greedy support, but if you have uh, control of the game like you do, she can pick up a lot of farm, and if she does, she can transition into a pseudo DPS or utility role. So similar to that Shadow Shaman, once he gets his Arcane Boots and Blink, he actually outputs a surprising amount of DPS and provides that init jump initiation power. This is familiar, just one of them flying around. Illusory Orb, just go off the creep wave, but the tower goes. Saga the Sword, used to catch here out of position. That's not good for the Catches out too. While that's happening, Disruptor glimpses back the uh, Visage. Mickey Mouse is able to phase shift to safety. But Mule hanging over in the Static Storm actually catches out too. Mule with those side blade procs as well as the Desolate just rips apart Life Stealer. One shot's familiar. Visage takes a fall. Caught up in the Reality Rift. So you got Reality Rift and Glimpse. So two ways to drag people back to you. And that actually could be a tier 3. Although on the upside, TYK's heroes are such a low uh, level. They will be respawning very shortly. But the DPS coming out from uh, Mule means that looks like a free tier 3 in the bottom lane. 2 IP and a very convincing game, don't it? Yeah, it's gonna be very difficult. Chaos Bolt over on the Lone Druid. Uh, bear, the bear's running for his life. Caught up in the connect field. They take a free uh, bottom rack. And that could be a too big of a lead for uh, 2 IP for TYK to recover. They've got three kills so far. No Dream Call initiation coming up from Mickey Mouse. Great defensive side traps. Slow down the uh, team coming in. Keeps his entire team alive. Great awareness coming up from Mule. Detonating those traps as the enemy team chased over them. All this team space. Thundercount pops the Vendetta, but instantly breaks it using the Blink Tag as he popped that preemptively just in case. He could choose to even go for a Dagon right now. The support server in TYK are so low and so squishy that Dagon would be a really good pickup just because you could instantly kill the Visage at the start of a fight or instantly kill that Sh Sand King. Pandy, he's almost got enough for his Radiance, but Radiance is a farming item. You can't immediately fight with well, the Lone Druid's the only hero that can immediately fight with the Radiance. But right now, his bear can... Out. Yeah, he's being called out. And his bear can die. He's been glimpsed back. Net flies as well. A and the Kinetic Field. <laughs> Pandy, the one thing keeping his team together at the moment could possibly help lead to a turnaround. Actually, takes <laughs> takes a fall. Yeah. Poor Lone Dude. <laughs> Although, I have to admit, I'm kind of biased against Lone Druid. I absolutely fucking hate the hero. <laughs> He's such a pain in the ass to lane against. Wolf yeah, cut. The Dyer's top tower is doing so its best, but it doesn't look good. Good, like, um, he can just destroy a base so fast if he has all the items on his beer. Yeah. Dyer's he's just such a pain fallen. in the ass to deal with, because if you lane on him 1v1, he's gonna always beat you. Just because he does so much damage, he instantly hits level 5, he gets one entangled proc, you die. If you go 1v3, he could leech creeps back with his bear. He's just such a pain in the ass. If you could play him there. Oh, that's got to hurt. Radiance bottom tower is Looks under like they're pushing over from the top lane. No defense coming out from TYK Dyer's so far. Tower is under attack. Would like to see another uh, great dream pool, illusory old dream pool into the bar strike episode. I feel sad for them. Dyer's top tower but 2IP, they're content battle. just to take the tier 3. Never mind, they're turning around. They could be going for a kill over on one of the heroes to catch Radiance him on position. Tower has fallen. Lone Druid Bear going for a few uh, pokes over in Wolfcunt. But he's just able to walk his way on out of there. Lone. Chaos Knight does move very fast. 
Song of the Siren actually catches out four. Where's Golfrey? I think he might have pulled out five. Mickey Mouse instantly pops with the Static Storm as well as the Meld Hit. Sand King is able to get off his uh, Barrow Strike Epicenter, but they could just face tank all of that. Buyback coming out from Puck. There isn't anything he can really do. He can pop out the Winning Weapon in Dream Swirl, but they can just stand and fight. Puck actually can't really do anything in this fight. Eats a two second Chaos Bolt. Might actually die before he does anything. Yeah, Golfrey runs back to the fight. Pops Rage, but he's taking so much damage right now. Tia in the back line is able to rip through him and pop. Chaos Knight gets a triple kill as well, so two triple kills, including the buyback. Bear could be taking four, three seconds stand up on him. It's a just back away. For those top BKB up on Chaos Knight, so he's even harder to kill. Thundercut with boots of travel, very, very far. Next assassin actually completely whiffs his uh, blink oh, impale. Goes in for the vendetta. He's, he wants to make up for what he did before. Never mind, it's on cooldown. They snipe out the bear, and it looks like the top lane of Rax is going to be taking four. GG already called 25 minutes in. And 2 IP, completely spanking TYK, 26 to 4. Under attack. Any final Dyer's thoughts on the game, Felfi? Yeah, 2 IP just got a bit lead and they never really gave it up. They just snowballed out of control, really. Yeah, don't think I can say any better than that. 15,000 EXP lead and 25,000 gold lead. One of the highest gold leads I've actually uh, advantages I've seen. <laughs> yeah. Poor TYK, they did their best, but we'll be taking a short break and we'll be right back for game number two. Uh, well, my co-caster for game number two will be Ken Killer of the Horseman of the Ruckus, so stay tuned for more Dota.